Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Supercars of London. Welcome to our final day on the road trip with the Aston Martin DBX before we head back down south and sadly hand the keys back. But yesterday was amazing. And can I just say this morning has been the best ever commute I think I've had. The roads up here are beautiful. The weather is impeccable and it is Friday morning. So to compare what I would have experienced down in London on a Friday morning to what I experienced driving this over to the Magnitude Finance headquarters where I'm gonna be meeting up with Tim Marlow and we're gonna be catching up around the used car market, the new car market, and talking about what car is coming next on the YouTube channel. And this BMW has just ruined the intro. Thank you very much, X3. Right, I'm gonna head up to the offices, catch up with Tim Marlow, then we're gonna jump in the DBX, find some amazing country roads out here and get cracking and talking all things car finance. Turns out where I did that intro was not the right place, but I've now found Tim Marlow's Tesla Model X. Look at this, Nardo grey wrapped, Voss and wheels, I believe, this car was fully kitted out by the legends at Urban Automotive. But have a look at the size difference between DBX versus the Model X, because they are, well, on the road, you'd kind of think of the same size, but actually the DBX is a much bigger, more aggressive looking car. It doesn't take long to get out onto some pretty amazing roads out here, no. does it? No, it is. It's, uh, <laughs> They're on your doorstep. Your, yeah, it's all uh, normally two wheels for me, these, rather than, uh, yeah. But not motorised. No, not, not, not motorised. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. no I'll give lights. you a. I'll give you a bit of a, a go. Not that we're here to. Uh... Sport plus then. Don't be scaring the sheep too much. It does. Like when you're just surprises me. Does that when you're driving around on tootering along those main roads, and you come onto here, we open it up, and wow, I'm it, impressed. It feels like it's got a much lower centre of gravity to any other SUV. <laughs> Straight around the school. <laughs> we'll calm it down because we're not here yet to review the Aston Martin DBX. That's actually coming in the next video once I've left you guys up in this wonderful world that I've discovered for the first time today because you're only just a stone's throw away from the likes of Redline, Absolutely. Amari, yeah. and obviously Alexander Prestige, which is how we've ended up here. Um, but we've actually come out to enjoy the weather, to enjoy this car, but also just have a catch up and talk a little bit about what's happening within the automotive market at the moment because there are so many people out there that have questions it's about the new car world, like getting a new car on order is almost impossible does, now. Does it even exist? Yeah. Are so we going right here? Go straight on, oh, straight, straight on, on. Down it, yeah. Well, it's one of those, does, does it even exist? Uh, we've, we've, we've managed to uh, get through COVID. COVID has disappeared and now also we've got the, uh, what's going on in the Ukraine. Yeah. And everyone talks about the, the, the wiring looms over there. Do people actually know what a wiring loom is? <laughs> Other than I've seen a wiring loom before, yeah. and fundamentally, what they run the entire way around it, it, a car. It, it's that... all the, really the different colour wires that all come together <laughs> to run all the electrics in the car. So it's a pretty major component. Yeah. Um, which, uh, yeah, cars need. So they've had to put the halts on. Obviously, the bad group Porsche, Audi, VW. I've heard this um, about Porsche because Tony and Sam are talking about how difficult wiring looms are. The Porsche is saying some dealerships in the UK. Porsche saying you can't get a car even in 2023. I think that's going to be, yeah, yeah. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking we've got at least two years left of this uh, um, yeah, uplift on used prices. But even then, when is it going to get back to normal? Because these yeah. cars will start to trickle through. Um, so you've got that. I think Land Rover have got the same kind of issue as well. Uh, also, they've got the new Range Rover coming out, but that's going to halt to supply through of that. So all in all, the new market is uh, a, a, a battle. Mm. But what does that do? <laughs> it makes the used car market seem... Uh, um, yeah, right, it's just so gone it has gone crazy. It has, it has gone crazy. But actually, what was snuck in with the used car market going completely nuts is just a new car price increase because of Brexit. There was a lot yep. of cars, especially VW. I think they increased their prices by five percent. I Sounds think. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is now factored into any car that trickles through and ends up on the used car market that might be a seventy-one plate or a twenty-two plate. Do you get that view from the M25? Uh, no. No. <laughs> right, okay. yeah. Honestly, sorry. Sorry to Driving, there. driving yeah. around here has made me so <laughs> depressed about living where I live because it's beautiful around here. Um, 
but yeah, I was talking to a VW dealership who was saying that if you go and have a look at the used cars now, they're actually looking pretty good value because new cars have gone up 5%. There's been an increase in 5%, um, which means that anything that, tr that trickles onto the used car market that's a year old, will have that factored in. Yeah, but, but again, usual supply and demand. Yeah. Because we've got customers coming to us now, um, yeah, wanting to get a, a car, we get the finance agreed, they go back to secure it and the car's gone. So uh, it's a case of getting the finance in place and uh, and then, uh, yeah, going out and uh, or, or paying a deposit on the car straight away, knowing you're confident in that. But Which the cars what? are just moving so quickly. I don't think I've ever documented that that's the way that I normally go car shopping. Mm. But literally from day one, uh, getting cars pre-approved through Magnitude Finance. Are we allowed to say that I would go on to Auto Trader, find a dummy car, yep. and get pre-approved on finance on that, which then means I know that I can spend 100 grand or I can go and find a car that's within that 100 grand price point. Yeah, it, mean, it means doubling the, the, the workload, but once we've got an acceptance in place, it's easy then to switch to different cars. But yeah, that's, that, that is what is happening out there. And it's not through any, any fault of the, uh, the, the customers, um, it is just purely a case of cars are going so quick. So I sold my GTR for top money, which now means I'm going to have to buy another car for top money. And I wanted to pick your brains as to what that means within the finance world. Now that the prices have increased, what does that do to the residual? What are the most asked questions that you're finding now within the finance world? Because so many people are still going out and buying big, expensive cars. I think you were saying that your average price per car at the moment is around 50 grand. Yeah, 50 grand advance is the, uh, yeah, what, what people borrow. My, my honest advice to you now is you've sold your car for top money, mm. get the bus for the next two years. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure that will fly on the channel, I'll be honest. <laughs> Wait for the prices to come down. Uh, no, yeah, seriously, that, 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 that's what's happening though. People are selling their cars for top money, but then no one's not, sh not sure what to go for mm. next because Everyone is looking at the market and going, well, that seems expensive, but that is it's, gonna be the way of the world for the next, I think, two to three years. People are talking, is the bubble gonna burst? But cars are becoming more expensive. Uh, yeah. But it's not just cars. Petrol, more yeah. expensive. <laughs> We've not even touched on that yet. But just, just look at the, the, the food bill. Everything is becoming more expensive. Yeah. So uh, that is a, a, a big change. I think talking to a lot of the guys that, that certainly work for me, uh, the, the younger ones, they've not seen rate increases like we've had. Mm. So the funding is going to be more expensive as well. And we're at that stage now where, yeah, interest rates are on the up. They're not yeah. going to stop where they are now. We had a little uh, jump up uh, uh, yesterday, um, a oh, little jump up this week. Yeah. And uh, they're going to keep on going. And don't know where it's going to get to, but they've got to try and uh, ease things off a little bit. So people are going to have to get used to it's costing them more. Seeing as the used car market has changed in the way that prices have increased, Lenders are still being quite conservative about the residuals and the future values because they don't know when the bubble is going to burst well, as such. They're conservative, that's, that's the job, that's what they do. Yes. Yep. Where would you say is the best value in a finance agreement? Is it still going down the route of agreeing to a four year term, which is what I normally do? which gets the monthly payments down a little bit more because you're spreading that cost over the four years, knowing that I'm not gonna keep it for that long. Or, because this bubble could last two to three years, is it actually now a little bit more sensible to take a finance agreement out over 24 to 36 months rather than 48 months? Because it's more difficult to predict what the prices are gonna be in four years time versus two years time. Yeah, I, I had this, um Classic example, yesterday, customer was, was owning an iron, he's probably only gonna keep a car two years. Yeah. Because he's, again, got something new on order. Yeah. But I said to him, you probably need to be looking at a three year deal because if your car is delayed, fix yeah. in, fix yeah. in for the three years now at the, the cost of funds now. Yeah. And um, rather than having to refinance in two years time, when which might be for another six or seven months when, when the cost is likely to be higher. Okay. Um, so my, my advice is, even if you're looking at changing in two or three years time, mm. go with a four year option Yeah, because you have that flexibility. Yeah. Most deals we do now, you can get out of them very, very easily. Yeah. 30 days interest penalty, yeah. uh, regulated basis. So you have that flexibility 
and not many customers keep their cars four years, we all know that. Yeah. But the world is changing, so if you want to come out after 18 months, two years, absolutely. Yeah. But if it's if, if it's fixed in stone, this two year deal, you have to do something after two years. Mm which does add a different uh, dimension into it. Gives it gives well. it a deadline, doesn't it? It does do, yeah. A lot of people don't understand how I'm able to get out of these finance agreements as easily as I do without completing the term because they still believe that if you enter into a four-year agreement, you have to keep the car for the four years. So I just wanted to pick your brain a little bit to be like, okay, well, if this is a short-term car for a lot of people, whether they're picking an in-between car or like me, knowing that they're only going to keep it 18 months to tell a story or to tick a box yeah a key flexibility it's got yeah to be, it, it, that, that is the key word yeah um we want it to be flexible because whilst we're talking about car cycles people's lifestyles change as well yeah uh, no one actually knows what's around the corner if someone wants to come out of an agreement for whatever reason it, it we, we allow them to yeah. do it and i actually think with what we've experienced with covid and what we're seeing now with the increase in living costs people's situations will continue to change uh, we straight, straight over. That's okay. different bridge. That's a footbridge. Ah, okay. You won't get this over there. <laughs> <laughs> All the fire engines they do a lot of uh, um, yeah training and practice in the rivers there. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think with the current global situation and what we've experienced over the two to three years, where as a as a species we've not really been able to have a break, but life has changed in front of our eyes. Having that flexibility over a commitment like a car finance payment is a, is a luxury that I think a lot of people out there still don't understand exists. Yeah, I, I agreed. There's been a lot of uh, um, pent up demand still, even for used cars, because yeah. people haven't been going away on holiday. They've yeah. not been doing their, 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 their luxury meals. So people do have some good savings now. Uh, the other option with rates increasing, savings rates are likely to increase as well. Yeah. So the main design is just to leave that money in the bank. Yeah. That is the, the, the other dimension to it as well but uh, there's, there's certainly uh, a lot going on i feel like i'm a distraction because i'm recording in a busy working office environment hey you're coming on a busy day yeah. fridays are always busy there's people <laughs> wanting the cars for the weekend so i'll tell you what let me introduce the team yeah show you who we've got and where all right. it all goes on behind the scenes here we go two, two functions here we'll keep the volume down a bit there's lots of phones going on but you've got the underwriting team these are the guys that are in charge of getting deals agreed okay so when you put your proposal in they get it agreed, and then it fuses across to the other guys, the payouts team. They're in charge of making sure the dealer has the money in time before you collect your car. This is the office where I use the magnitude finance calculator. These are the guys behind the magnitude finance calculator. The calculator is there to give everyone a rough idea. But once you've done your proposal or got questions or you need something, these are the guys that will speak to you, and we go from there. Okay. So uh, yeah, they, uh, they they do the fine tuning. Yeah. Say. Okay. Fine tuning, getting the quotes together and uh, different options and. I'll poke my head around the corner. Yeah, keep it quiet. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Everyone's, work, everyone's working hard. Doing deals, that's what they should be doing. I recognise that face in the corner. We've done many events together. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think I'll head back in the DBX. Okay. Because it is now time that I have to hand the keys back. It's been very cool and also amazing to actually what see what goes, goes on. on. Yeah, you've been to the Mayfair office a couple of times for sign-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get you up north, it's a rarity, isn't it, really? <laughs> well, I mean, if so. the weather's like this all of the time, then I'll come up more often. Hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs> Tim, good Take to care. see you, mate. I'll see you, see you soon. <laughs> Safe to say I'm putting the terrain mode to the test. Thought I'd come down here for some photos. I'm doing a three point turn. Where am I? Am I need to be in reverse, I think. Back into drive. Now we've got a hill climb. 